it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and today I have an auction haul. So it really didn't go to plan. You know, I didn't run out of there with boxes and boxes of things like I would hope to do, but I did manage to find a few things. Now there are a couple disappointments here. I will get to that, but let's just start off right up here in front. And I know you can't see the table, but I'm trying to do a compromise of being closer to the camera. And so I'm just gonna try my best to hold these things up uh, so that you can see them. So here we have a hot cold penguin made by West Bend. I think I made that up. No, I didn't. West Bend, and it is chrome. Very cool Bakelite handles, as you can tell, has a knob on top here. And then we have the two Bakelite handles on the side here. And as a set here, you can tell it looks like a penguin. So it looks like a penguin, and then there's also penguins on it. It's a really interesting, fun thing. And uh, I find them quite often. This one here I paid $7 for, which mm, I wish I didn't. I wish I didn't have to spend that much, but they sell online for me routinely for about $20 plus shipping. So I think I have them on there for about $33 right now. And these are a pain to photograph. As you can tell, it shows every glare. So I, um, I took a photograph one time a long time ago and I've just been re-upping the quantity on that one. So that's one of the reasons why I paid $7 for a $20 flip. Uh, because you know, but it's one of those things and I think I'll do pretty good on it Actually, I have another one of these same penguin ice buckets currently in my booth and I only bought that one That was a previous haul. I think a couple months ago I bought that one because the antique mall owner said hey, we have someone looking for this uh, Actually, I was there the time that the customer was asking about it So I overheard that I said, okay, so people wanting these things here I'll go find one. So I found one at another antique mall and I think they had it listed or for sale. I don't know. I think $12. I think it was 12 or some, something like that. I don't know. Anyways, I bought the other one. I'm trying to flip the other one. It's not happening, but I think I'll just list it online along with this one. So enough about that. Penguin West Bend Chrome hot cold ice bucket serving dish thing. Something that's kind of funny that I didn't really buy intentionally, but it came with a couple magazines here is this first aid drink well it's a fur thirst thirst aid <laughs> and if you look at it there are these old medicine sort of well not medicine like the test tube things and they each say on here scotch gin and bourbon thirst aid kit for emergency use only and it's kind of funny so uh that was just something i didn't plan on buying but it came with something else so it's, it'll be fun to list this. It's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know if I would have bought it, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It just came with something. So because of what it is, I think I might be able to sell it for like 15 bucks. I don't know. I haven't done the research on this. It's just one of those kind of gag gifts. So it can't really go for a ton, but uh, it's just cool. Like I said, it came with these magazines and I paid $2. So that was part of the $2 purchase in the auction lot. And it came with these Life magazines that I was really more interested in. And my phone looks like it's going to die in, um, well, it says soon, 1.45. Oh, that's a couple hours. Why do you tell me? I don't need to know that. Okay, so Life magazine. And this one is 1953. And it's awesome. And it has Elizabeth II coronation portrait on here. Very neat. I flipped through all three of these. There's three magazines. Uh, they smell kind of weird. So I flipped through all three of them and was more interested in the advertisements and like the text layouts and like the graphic stuff, you know, more so than I didn't read any, anything, of course not, but we have some really cool, you can see like this guy with his pipe. So lots of fun things like that. Now this one is 1957. So we have a 1953, 57, and this one I believe is like later, I think, I don't know, it doesn't say. But what's interesting about this one is it has like these metallic, I don't know if you can catch that in light, but these pages are like, has this metallic effect. And it reminds me so much as I was flipping through of like the 2000, well, the year 2000, whenever everything was like metallic and silver, uh, like the space age, well, it wasn't space age. No, it was uh, the millennium, but it harkens back to the space age. So it's pretty cool. So that's interesting to me. And I picked them up just to flip through them. What am I gonna do with them now? I have no clue. They don't really sell for a whole lot. I'm yakking too much. All right, so I bought those and the first aid kit. And that's it, no, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, I also bought these really cool squirrels and they are ceramic 
they would be either put on a table or you could hang them on a wall. So this hole here would allow you to put them on a wall like that. So they look like they look like they're climbing up the wall. And I have a pair like so. They're both the same size. Usually I find them in a larger size, about nine to 10 inches long. And then this little guy here, and I'll sell them as a pair or I'll just find the little guy. But I have a pair, so I'm thinking they're gonna go for about 20 bucks plus shipping. So about 30 bucks total combined price, shipping included for these. And they're really cool and they're squirrels. I love picking up squirrels. That's just something that I really prefer. That's kind of interesting. All right, so squirrels. Another thing that I picked up, I'm gonna save the, my, like the most alarming thing for a little bit later. It's something that you'd be surprised that I purchased it. Uh, okay, a couple little things that I'm disappointed about. We'll get through that. So this was an incidental, it came in a, a, a lot. It's just one of these little, uh, like a drip, 70s kind of thing. So we'll maybe try that out in the booth for a few dollars. It's not really worth a whole lot. And then, so I paid, I think $2, I paid $2 for this lot. That was included. So is this little booty here. It's kind of a Christmas shoe. I love that. And it's Japan, obviously. So it's this like 1960s Christmas kish. Japan, I said that. Christmas thing. And then also included was this Winking Santa mug. It's like a little cup. And it's also marked Japan on the bottom. But it's really cute and that was included in that lot. But the main reason why I purchased it, the lot that is, is because of this angel here. And you know I like picking up these figurines with the uh, the months on them. And this one especially because it has a giant heart on it. and. I know we're past Valentine's Day now, but I, my mind wasn't thinking that. It doesn't matter. It's cool. Now, I paid $2 for this. I was excited. I got it home. I looked at it, and the wing has been broken off and glued back on. So that goes to show you need to look at these things. I preach it, but I don't do it. So here it is. It's broke. Can you tell? There's a kind of a crack there. It's yellow. The glue has. So from the, fit, the, from the front, it's really great. These things sell for about $20, $25. So uh, yeah, I still think that I'm gonna be able to sell it. It's just not gonna go for that much, maybe $12 with, $12 to $15 with free shipping because it is cool. I like it. And it's, yeah, awesome. So yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm still happy that I picked it up, especially for the other two little things that came with it. This was the third or the last thing in that lot. Uh, we just have here a little blown glass white and orange vase with a ruffle top. Uh, again, it's something that's not really gonna sell for very much. It, there's just not really a whole lot of market for this kind of thing. So we'll see if I can sell it in the booth for maybe $3, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Uh, so one thing that Barb actually bought, and you know, I don't show her, I don't show her haul, her part of what she bought because I don't have it for one thing, but this was actually something that she purchased and. Um, she was only really after this California pottery. It was like a large yellow, um, really large, really. And it's like kind of opens up and it's yellow. I don't know what it is. I guess it's just like an open bowl, but it's really mid-century, has like the lines for it. This was also included. This is Balik, something that I've been really interested in lately and wanting to find. What I'm really wanting to find is a Balik bowl in the basket weave, which has like this this line work, um, I forget what that's called, Re reticulated, no, I don't know. It's it's like, it's, well, what you do is you take these pottery, thin lines of it, and you put it over this mold, like a, a mold, and, and so there's like, I guess it is reticulated, no, it's not, they don't cut it. It's so you're building, you're building a basket out of pottery, like thin ropes of pottery, and then they bake it, and then you're left with this kind of see-through basket thing with these applied flowers on it. This here is, Balik, this here is Balik as well. It's a biscuit jar and it has this bowl on it. Now, Balik is known for their basket designs and more so they're known for the clover. Like if you see uh, something in this color, this sort of ivory, really pretty color white with painted green uh, clovers on it. And that's, I think they're most famous for that. But this here is just another item that they made and it was, they was made in 2001. And one thing I really like about Balik is they mark everything. There's a green stamp on this one and it says 2001. If uh, they do have different stamps depending on the years. And I think green has been recycled 
Uh, green originally would have probably been, I think the 50s or the 60s, I think. Um, but more recent, I think they have a black label or a black mark. So, you know, I'm just saying, I like the way that they do their marking. It's very easy to know when things were made. You can kind of narrow it down within 10 years. So, I also purchased something that, well, I know is going to sell. It's because people love these jars. This one is not old. I'll first and foremost say that. But whenever I was bidding on it, I did not look at it ahead of time. So, it's a reproduction coffee container. There's no marking on the bottom here. It's very clean. The lid is super clean and there's actually like a waxy kind of insert in there. So yeah, it's not old, but I still think it's going to sell in the booth and I might be able to get about 12 bucks on it for a really cool jar. Now, so I bought this jar along with these two ball jars, actually one ball jar, ball perfect mason, and then this kern, this kern jar. And I'm not an expert in jars, uh, but I still think that each one of these, now this one says number 10 on the bottom and this one says five. I still think that as a jar with the zinc lids and they have these uh, porcelain, porcelain or milk glass, I can't remember. I think it's porcelain, these inserts here. So that adds a little bit of, little bit of value. Um, I still think that something like this can sell in the booth for probably about five dollars. So we're looking at five, ten, and then like ten, fifteen on this. And I paid, I think I paid like six dollars. And uh, yeah, I maybe wouldn't have if I had the foreknowledge that that wasn't an older, uh, that bigger one wasn't an actually older jar. But I did not do the research. I did not look at it ahead of time. I was farther away from it, and they were holding it up, and I was just like. I'll play, you know, we'll try. Um, I got, there was a lot of wood things there, somebody that was really into making wood crafts and things. So there was a couple things that caught my eye. This, oh, this actually, okay. So these are the, like the fronts or false fronts of birdhouses that you could just decorate with and they're kind of fun. There's four of them with like different colored roofs and uh, they're kind of cool and I think that I can still sell them, especially now that spring is on the way. And I might put like three bucks per on these just to get them out uh, because they're not in really that complex. I mean, let's be honest, you could hang this on a tree and really fool a bird. So, <laughs> but anyways, there's four of those and hopefully that turns into something. But those came with the uh, squirrels. So I got the squirrels and the, uh, the birdhouse fronts. And I think I paid it's either six or seven dollars. So yeah, I did pay up, but I was wanting the squirrels and things just weren't going my way at this auction. Things were going pretty high. A couple other people said that. So yeah, I need to really watch that and maybe not go to so many auctions until we have a lot more of them because it's like everyone's scrambling to buy what they can and then that raises up the prices. So yeah, I'm still saving the, the best for last. Trust me, don't, don't forget. And the other wood thing I bought is actually the step stool here, which is a great booth item. And I paid $2 for it. And I think this can easily sell for $12, uh, at least 12 bucks. Yeah. So it's a really cool one. Okay. So the second to last thing that I bought is actually some more flatware. And I had tried looking up what this pattern is and the best I could come out with, uh, boy, that was a few days ago. What did I come up with? I don't know. It basically, it comes down to, it is made by a company, but I don't remember off the top of my head, but it does not have a pattern, so it's irrelevant almost. It's not continental or, I think it starts with an I? I don't know, but um, I hope I wrote that down somewhere. So there's like roses on the handle and it's sort of this black and, well, it's like black, it's kind of a two-tone and it's stainless steel Japan. And it's a whole box here. Maybe I can show you. I paid $5 for this whole box worth. It's almost a complete set. Unfortunately, it's not a complete set. I think we're a little short on the dinner forks by one, two, three, four, five. We're short three forks, three large forks, but I think there's everything else. So that's unfortunate, but I only paid $5 for it. So I still think I'm going to be able to do pretty good, especially since it's stainless steel and really usable. It's, you know, it's a good hearty service set. So I still think I can sell it and all in all pretty happy with that. So, okay, the last thing, which is like the most weird, I guess, 
I was just talking about how little I know about marbles and how I had all these marbles I had purchased. Why did I purchase them? Oh, because they were two dollars. And we were at an, I was at an estate sale and it was a good deal. And I'm glad I did because what I have here is a little bear jar. I actually just picked up this jar recently and I'm filling up him up with marbles. And so there are, I've done research, there are a lot of acro agate uh, marbles in here and those are white. Maybe I should show you. This is not going to be a marble episode. I, I don't, I'm not an expert, but I... Triggering anyone? <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to get into it 100%, but there are some really pretty marbles in here. And the acro agate ones are like white with a color added, and they're kind of swirled in. So there's quite a bit of those. There's some other ones in here, red, blue, orange. And then, um, so those I really like. So for the most part, I'm putting those in there because they're really colorful and fun, but sort of off topic. I've been doing research. I've been learning which marbles are more desirable. And what I have found, I'm sort of a lay person in this, that the German marbles from the 1800s are very popular. And I did research before the auction not knowing what was going to be there, mind you. I just had this kind of general knowledge, enough that was going to hurt me, let's say. <laughs> so in my hand, I have a marble. How much did I pay for this marble? $30. <laughs> wow, 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 okay. So the suspense is building, right? Okay, this is a German marble, the maker of which I'm not entirely sure. I guess it's sort of irrelevant. It's from the late 1800s, and it has this latticino effect. And that is a term, it's a, a word that only describes the fact that it has that white honeycomb sort of pattern in the center going through it. And then we have these striped bands along the sides and this alternating pattern of red and green. And so it's a really nice marble. There are no big, like, big chunks missing on it. It does have the pontile mark on it still from when it was produced, which I understand is important, I guess, for some. Okay, see, what I, what I found out is the fact that it's not completely polished and shiny and brand new looking is to its benefit. They, people don't want, I think, these things restored. They want the character, they want the little tiny divots for where you can see it was used and all of that. And um, at least that's my take on it. So if you were to grind, grind down the pontille mark, that might negatively affect the value. But all in all, it's a pretty good marble. I do like the pattern. It sort of has this Christmas vibe to me, and it's really cool. So it does not glow under black light or anything like that. I don't know why I paid $30 for it. I think what I was trying to do is just get my foot in the door and understand the market. And the best way I know to do that is to put myself into a bind where I purchase something and then I need to do a little bit more research on it and kind of work my way out of it. So in the case of this, I, do I dove really heavily into what makes a good marble what to look for, how much to pay, what do these things normally go to. So what do these normally sell for? Well, they sell for about $30 up to about 70 realistically, for one like this. But if this had, say, more interest, if this had a yellow core, the Latticino, that would bring it up to $150, $200, depending on the condition, like I said. But the yellow core, the yellow honey, I'm not gonna call it a honeycomb, but the yellow lattice work, Latticino, in the center of this, really does make it more valuable. Why, I'm not sure. It's just one of those things. But uh, also what makes things more valuable is the bands that you do see, the green and red. Um, those, the more colors you have in each band itself, so I know one is red, but if it was say red, blue, well, I don't know, red, blue, yellow, all in one single stripe that you see. I mean, so if you look up closer, you're like, yeah, that's one band and it has multiple colors in that single band, that's going to help it out too. Now these do have multiple, like the green has like a little strip of white in the center of it and the red also, but it's sort of muddied and not perfectly like color, 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 like that. So that, you know, but all in all, it's a great marble and hopefully you're interested enough to keep watching me talk about a marble. But that's sort of my trick when I, um, when I want to learn something, I just sort of have to do it. I have to buy it, put myself into that space of okay well now I need to really learn about it because it applies to me and I so sometimes I think it's hard 
for at least me to try to research things I have no clue about whenever I don't have them in front of me and I'm not actively applying the, the knowledge of what I'm learning to a real life instance. So that's the whole point of buying a marble for $30. Yes, it may be a mistake. I may only be able to sell for 30 or not at all, but I like it. It is cool. I do like glass. So that's sort of the prerequisite, prerequisite of buying a marble to begin with. It is glass. And it's just in understanding uh, the different types of marbles and how to identify them and all of that. And so pretty cool. Uh, but like I said, there are some interesting marbles in here. If anybody happens to know more about marbles, I think I have one in here. I can't get my finger in there. I feel like Winnie the Pooh <laughs> trying to get the honey out. This is the marble I was talking about. Okay, this one truly is blue and red. But I'm just kind of hanging on to these guys right now. This big one here, we'll see what I decide to do with it if I list it or something. Uh, obviously, the longer I have it, the more I'm not going to want to list it because I do think it's cool. But I just am rambling. This is a very look. I have to cut some out of this. Very long video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.